Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the online course structure form and architecture the synergy. This is lecture number 2 relationship of structure to architectural buildings. In lecture number 1 we just uh, started with the introduction where we learnt about different aspect of structural form and its synergy with architecture. And we have seen not only in nature, but also in man made world we have a strong association with the structural form and architectural design. So, in this lecture uh, basically this topic is being divided into two lecture, lecture 2 and lecture 3. So, in lecture 2 we will try to understand uh, in detail the relationship of structure with the architectural building. Now, again we just refresh our mind with the definition as I already mentioned that uh, the definition of structure or building or architecture will get different kind of definitions from different sources, but to understand in pertinent to the building and architectural design, uh, we just put it like this. The structure is the part of building that raises the load that imposed on it. It is very clear and straightforward answer that suppose a building is a structurally built very strong. That means, the load, the external load or the other dead load or live load, we will talk about those different kind of loads in upcoming lectures, but basically we all understand what is load. So, it is the force on that particular sur sur uh, surface or the object. So, it should have that uh, you know capacity to resist it from collapse. So, the part of a building that resists the load is basically the structural element and all together when they actually you know put in a right manner uh, that composition of that element will make the structure of the building. Now, what is building? Now, we learned the definition of architecture where it was said the articulation of space with the help of your uh, the application of technology different uh, you know signs into it. Now, let us see the definition of building. Uh, it is an envelope that encloses and subdivides space in order to create protected environment. Already I mentioned in lecture number 1, where well like in the primitive age people they start building because of you know they uh, had to protect themselves from the external uh, dangers. It may be from the weather, it may be from the other animals. So, this safety the protection was the need to make something called shelter and this is an envelope that we normally name as building, but in a building it may be a single like lecture room like the room uh, now I am uh, standing on it and it may be uh, like a series of rooms put together to fulfill our need. Say for example, if we take example of a residential building. So, we have a bedroom, we have drawing room, uh, we have uh, like toilet then kitchen area. So, basically it is something the division of space for as per our requirement. Now, uh, in this particular lecture we will try to see the close relationship of uh, structural application to the building. Now, to start with uh, this is a very schematic uh, diagram in this slide where it is just a you can say the under construction building. So, here different components of a building structures uh, been shown. So, it start with the foundation that we uh, have uh, uh, you know seen like it is the anchor like the tree they have the roots to hold it the canopy and the branches like that for a building. So, we need foundation and that should anchor like this will anchor the whole building with the ground, so that it can stand uh, safely. Then also it consists of some vertical uh, structure and some horizontal structure. So, vertical means uh, based on its position, so we can say wall, column etcetera 
and then also to support it like a frame structure then we also uh, need to put beam adequately to connect them and then uh, to have this space usable so we have to create different slab now composition of all these uh, like beam wall slab and foundation they will make the skeleton like uh, in the previous lecture i have shown uh, like one image with a uh, human skeleton and the outer uh, you know surface so like that what we see in the building this is basically the final outcome but before that inside that uh, there are like uh, bone like skeleton which will uh, which will be like uh, you know saving uh, the building which will make it safe uh, will protect the building now the main fundamental is that whatever the load come on this elements like slab slab will then transfer the load to the beam beam will transfer to the column and finally it will transfer the load to the foundation and foundation will transfer the load to the ground so that is the whole mechanism will come into detail when we discuss about different kind of loads and how they act to the building but whatever i mentioned in this slide this is very basic like very simple straight forward uh, uh, building where it is just uh, we can say the apartment building a very simple design and concept and looking into the picture we hardly get any idea about the material to be used for that or uh, you know the other functions so basically the moment we make it little bit complex like we play with the different concept different requirement sometimes we need a convention hall where we cannot put a column in between we have to make it obstruction free then probably the structural uh, composition will change so that is why we can say that whatever the you know component of a structure or maybe the parts and parcel of that it will vary to from simple to the complex structure so let us understand this with some other slide so in this slide we uh, i just uh, presented one igloo and the other is tp so the uh, right hand side picture the tp is basically a temporary structure so you can see that this is a cloth like membrane material which uh, like uh, we can put on a structure temporary made with some you know wooden stick which is make it stable a conical structure so that can be a replacement of a tent so the arrangement is very simple and we can easily make it the other one the igloo uh, it is again a compressive structure uh, so here we'll put the compressed ice and make this form which will protect uh, like the people who are residing inside it now uh, just uh, as i mentioned the compressive structure compressive uh, means if you compress any object say for example i have this uh, pen right so here if i want uh, just give pressure from both the end so what is happening inside it so it try to compress but as because i cannot put enough pressure on this from both the side so the change is not visible to you but if we perform it with some higher load then definitely it will collapse after certain time so there are structure like which are tensile in nature and all so the other side uh, this particular structure conical structure is well formed and it is uh, protected people for the weather and all the concept behind these two is basically the basic purpose to protect from the external environment maybe it is uh, the extreme cold weather or it may be a uh, scorching summer and as of now these two uh, are very simple to construct now come to a recent one like this is burj al arab in dubai this is really a good architecture and like whenever we see this image or in any video that uh, is showing this building we really appreciate it and we really want to know more about it uh, from the source but if you see the structure that i have shown uh, beside that uh, image 
So it is not that simple that we have seen for the igloo and all. So here it accounts more than that. More than that I want to mean that it is act with a compressive you know load the tensile load along with that there are other several loads that this building should uh, resist. One of that is basically the wind. If you see the location of this, so basically wind will uh, play a crucial role and if you see the height of the building, so at that height also there will be a pressure, wind pressure and all. So then the structural composition will be different. So then that should take care of uh, the wind load and other lateral pressure and that is why it is being complexed. So along with the simple beam column structure, now it need more than that. Now what about this? This is a new Beijing airport uh, in China uh, which will be like which is considered to be the largest airport in the world. So see this, this is under construction photograph. So looking at this is nowhere matching with the basic concept of the beam column and other uh, structural element is so complex, but it is possible and as because it is possible you can see the image is still uh, like uh, see those you know different curvature and all and here if you see that not only at the roof, so they play with different curvature at different axis. So it is basically creating that particular environment, that particular enclosure with some flow. So in order to make it happen, so we have to design the structure accordingly. Now we have two way, one we restrict ourselves with a very straight forward composition and compromise uh, our concept, we cannot go beyond that, but this is the time where we should go uh, uh, what we want and we support it with different you know structural advancement and we apply the technology to make it happen. So this is the uh, repeat slide that already I uh, presented um, uh, you know in my last uh, lecture, lecture number 1, but just uh, have a recap to it. So in this process we create uh, the space, we articulate the space as per our need, we subdivide the space as per our requirement and definitely uh, there we put our idea. So this is very important here the idea and then the technology definitely the new technology will help us to make it uh, more you know desirable and the control on the quality and we have to fulfill the requirements. So these are very key parameters which uh, with which will uh, go forward and these are the key points where also we mentioned about the concept. So the moment we get a requirement that we need this much of space, this type of space, then we start uh, generating different concept, how we can make it uh, you, know, uh, you know purposeful, how we can make it uh, different from existing one so that uh, it will make a contrast to the existing uh, buildings and all and all will appreciate. Uh, so to bring that wow factor into our building. So we should really play uh, hard in concept stage and then definitely the other points to be maintained where we should also look into the space available, the resource available, technology available, the materials another important thing which will change uh, many decision even sometimes because of the materials we cannot select uh, a structure because the material is not available at that particular site or location then the execution. So when we execute well then that will give uh, the result that we actually want. So before we uh, move to the next slide, let us uh, understand the simplicity and complexity. So you all can see that I have a paper, plain uh, paper, piece of paper and this is very simple, right? I can use it uh, for writing something or some, uh, if I fold it, so I can make aeroplane out of it. So with the plain concept, plain blank paper we can create many things. But just uh, think about the structural point of view. So if I try to hold this paper, 
it is not possible okay because of the self weight and all but i just fold it now it is standing right so this type of structure will uh, discuss in uh, that particular section when we discuss about different type of structure that we can use in our architectural field so this is folded plate and if you make it like that trial and error you can get something like that so here it is a letter you can say uh, m or w but uh, you know frankly speaking it can also carry a load suppose this paper if i want to put this uh, charger like uh, the changer slide changer it cannot hold the load i am scared that it may fall but with this it may act as a stand without any external support so this is the beauty like with a plain paper with a plain kind of slab to convert it to the uh, you know folded plate slab can you know solve many purpose so we'll discuss in detail so let us uh, move on to the next slide so in this uh, lecture we primarily focus on the concept so uh, what uh, Priestman says about the concept concept refers to the essential formative scheme idea or basic organizing principle of a building design a strong initial idea is valuable because that will be implemented that requires the cost that requires the other energy manpower everything so that is very vital thereby ensuring uh, coherence among the all elements like all elements means the space available the structure to be used everything is related to, with the concept so for that based on uh, a book uh, authored by Charles Son uh, that structure uh, as architecture. So, concept and structure has a relation and broadly we can classify that concept in four pairs. So, one is order versus chaos, stability versus instability, static versus dynamic, grounded versus floating. So, looking at the terms we can get some idea okay what exactly they mean so when you call something in order so everything is order so that means it's very simple straightforward where it chaos is scramble like this is something i draw it may be an abstract art but it is creating a chaos where i just make this arrangement so, you can say that they are in order and they are making uh, like uh, you know three column two row composition array. The stability and instability, stability means say for example, this is a uh, you know elevation from a site of a pyramid and if you just this is the ground. So, we can say that this structure this form is very stable whereas, if I make it inverted so it assumed to be very much instable but that is not the challenge because uh, also like we can make it happen there are buildings which is having static means is very straightforward where we have a composition like this and dynamic relate to the flow which will change or give a motion when you look into the building so we will have some curvature and other thing then grounded and floating grounded means it has uh, a feeling that it is anchored with the ground whereas floating means it seems to be floated but exactly it is not the real case but visually we'll see suppose a building uh, which is having a mass heavier and you know it's just stand on a very simple you know and very narrow structural element below so this is seems to be floating so this is overall uh, idea that uh, we can say so let us uh, just understand through different case study so this is again a nice uh, example uh, given in the book structure as architecture so here uh, the you know the concept 
uh, of uh, making architecture uh, like from your order to chaos how it is going to change. So, in this, uh, this is the plan where you can say that these uh, dots are all column and they are placed in order. So, creating a very order form architecture and then when you start rotating it to the B, so it is moving to the chaos and finally, when you make it very random, then it is making this picture, right. So, this is the conceptual image, now we will get this one. So, this is uh, another example of order which is uh, Parthenon from history Athens. So, if you see in the plan, so external and internal columns they are placed in order and finally, this is the outcome, okay, where all verticals columns are placed in order with a equal distance and also it is giving a feeling of order and uh, we appreciate it. So, this type of building. So, this is one example from the history. So, let us uh, get some more example and this is from India, our parliament house. So, here the corridor and these columns, okay, the earlier was uh, like that order form we got in a rectangular form, but here we are getting it for the oval form. So, in this corridor the vertical they are placed in order and creating another aesthetic. So, we appreciate this kind of structure, not only in parliament building, there are many such buildings where we have uh, this kind of columns, you know, placed in a, you know, elliptical form or in a circular form. So, this is another example of order. Now, let us move to the cows and here uh, like before I say anything looking into picture, you can understand the cows. So, basically if you see this is a uh, the bird nest olympic stadium in uh, beijing china so in this uh, this is another fantastic creation where the concept is been taken from the nature the bird nest and the members are placed randomly not in particular order so it create some chaos but overall outcome definitely we appreciate so it's not only like we should always create our architecture or design in order, but sometimes uh, perfect execution of chaos will also create some great uh, you know experience. This is another example where uh, this is uh, Royal Ontario Museum. So, here uh, you can see that none of the surface are very straightforward or in order. So, in from external it is something like are looking at uh, like some concept uh, who are pursuing architects, they must have heard about deconstructionism. So, it is a deconstruction concept has been played and surfaces are just you know um, tangled with each other and this is from the interior. Even interior we cannot get a smooth you know surface, not smooth in sense of the material. I say that when you just move your eyes uh, through those lines, so it is creating some chaos. So, this is another uh, piece of uh, you know architectural example where structure are made in such manner which is creating chaos. The basic concept was to make it like this and the structure that support it and final result that we all see in this picture. Now, move to the next concept that is the stability and uh, instability versus uh, you know. In this uh, stability, it is not basically in point of uh, the structural stability. Okay? So, let us clear this stability is basically visual stability. So, looking at the building, we will say it is showing the stability or it is not showing the stability because a building looking uh, instable uh, uh, in this aspect will not mean that structure is very poor and it may fall any time. So, in this visual uh, stability, if you see again uh, this is the picture from the same book, the reference uh, is given here. So, here if you see that it is a proper arrangement in order. So, external columns and internal columns and they make it very stable form. Now, if you move through this A, B, C and D, in D where these are placed, these are not regular column, uh, these are some other members, columns are 
placed uh, in a slant. So, basically if we just uh, try to draw, so this is one slab and this is another slab, we can connect it with this state column and in the instable form that we create intentionally something like that where we will feel that this particular column may fall. So, it is showing a uh, you know visual instability to it. So, let us clear this idea with some of examples. This is uh, the law codes in Vancouver, the structure is uh, very massive, okay. uh, but still uh, as because we have this uh, you know uh, concrete support where you can see those uh, space frame are being supported, here also you can see this supported. So, while working uh, uh, like while working with this space you will feel a stability that this whole roof will not fall over you. So, you feel very secure uh, and then um, you can say this structure is made very stable. So, space frame roof supported by concrete frames conveying a sense of stability. Okay, so, it is stable, structurally stable and visually also we feel it very stable. But if you remove this and it is having just some slant you know random members, so probably will be scared. This is one example of another uh, you know in the category of stability uh, from history example the Parthenon uh, the Pantheon sorry the Pantheon in Rome. So, here you see that you know huge dome domical structure as a roof, but this place is feels very secured because of those members. So, if you see that the whole domical structure being placed over different wall component and the column, so that this uh, give a sense for stability. Now, move on to the instability forum Barcelona solar plant, looking at the structure itself, it is very looking very dangerous, but structurally it is strong, stable, but visually it is looking very instable, because of some of irregular piers support this whole pargola is being placed. So, if you stand here and look into this structure, probably you will feel it very instable. Take this example, the reactor, uh, you can also um, uh, search of this building, which is being created by two artists and this is a experience balancing self weight. So, this is having a pivot point. So, these two people moving from different place and all, it will have this inclination and all. So, it is uh, a perfect example of uh, visual instability of a building, but again this is a stable uh, structure. So, structure is made accordingly. So, along the concept it is made. Now, move to uh, the third concept that is static versus dynamic. Static means uh, we will not have any you know flow. So, here also it is a regular arrangement uh, of a column, pairwise column. So, it is giving a static uh, you know sense, whereas you placed it in order or you just change the scale from small or something like that or maybe you create something in uh, you know you know dynamic in order. So, it create a visual dynamism in your architectural form. So, again let us clear with some of the example. So, this is one example of a hotel Hyad Regency from Kolkata, here the structure says is very straight forward and static. So, horizontal and vertical uh, you know combination to that and it is giving a very static uh, you know image um, when you look into this. Move to the next example, this is from I am Ahmedabad. So, here also the heavy structure, the exposed brick work, then uh, you know very straight form. Uh, is giving a sense of staticness. Even uh, the inside like uh, it is a series of uh, you know semicircular arch, uh, it is also creating a very static environment. Now, come to dynamic. This is a building designed by uh, Jaha Hadith. So, here you can see that uh, the building is creating a flow. So, everywhere if you see that it is showing a wave or even it is clear in this picture. So, it is not very static. So, basically if you look into this building your eye will 
actually take that route or make this transition. So, we, this is another nice example where uh, it is showing the dy visual dynamism of the building and this is being supported with that particular type of structure. So, it is not straight forward beam column structure. So, for that we need different kind of structural element and that is why this subject is important to know. Because if we do not have uh, the knowledge of the structure that can make this uh, or which kind of structure is uh, really fruitful to that, then probably we cannot create this kind of dynamic uh, architecture. So, take another example of dynamic architecture, this is uh, Madrid airport where this is the terminal uh, building where the roof structure again creating a flow and creating a dynamic sense everywhere. Though the uh, structure is very light and it has to be light because if you see that uh, this pan is quite huge, we cannot have more obstruction. So, again this structure is giving a sense of dynamic visual dynamism to the building and the structure being made with that with the proper uh, you know roofing and the lightweight structure at the roof supported by the adequate structural members. And uh, this is the you know uh, the fourth one and the last component under the concept category. So, here if you see the grounded that means, if you see this part, this is dotted the foundation and the superstructure, it is something like that. It is having a you know connection straight away with the ground. So, it may be a portal, but when we talk about the floating, so the reduction in uh, the you know surface at the bottom to the ground, it is creating a sense of uh, you know floating. Here also the I have, I have already drawn this kind of picture where it is the heavy merge is uh, you know standing on a shallow structural member and sometimes also you can have these uh, lead rubber bearings where uh, you know this kind of structure uh, we use for the earthquake prone area where you know uh, base isolation technique or something uh, uh, of that nature being used to uh, make your building protected. So, these are the concepts. So, let us clear our uh, concept with uh, some of the things. So, here the building is uh, uh, again a curve, but uh, the interesting part is that it is grounded at different discrete place. So, so that we can see that it is anchored. So, otherwise it may flow out or something. So, this is perfectly grounded. This is the Rolex uh, learning center in uh, Switzerland. Now, this example uh, is a very famous example in the field of architecture, the glass house. So, here it is uh, the placed very simplistic architecture with you know, you know glass and uh, the other transparent material and it is perfectly grounded to the lawn. So, this is another example of grounded uh, you know visually grounded architecture. Now, come to the floating. This is gas uh, natural headquarters in Barcelona. If you see this particular cantilever, okay, normally you know in a building we have some cantilever 1 meter, 1.5 meter and in some special building we have 2 to 3 meter and then we are very scared that how to make it, it may collapse or something without any support. But this is being created and visually building is stable definitely that was taken care of, but this heavy mass with a shallow vertical structure create a sense of floating. So, that is uh, the overall idea to pick up this example. So, this is uh, giving a visual sense that this heavy mass, this particular wing of the building is floating. Now, move to the next one. So, this is similar to the glass house building, but here the difference as we can see from the concept we have seen somewhere if you reduce uh, uh, the connection with the ground of the superstructure that is also giving a sense of floating here you can easily see those gaps. So, this is your ground level and there is a enough gap to it. So, this building with this you know uh, minimal support with the narrow columns it is showing a sense of floating. So, this is the example of floating. So, all these examples uh, we have seen uh, that is uh, basically the concept. So, concept was created to make it dynamic and adequate 
uh, you know and um, you know as per that accordingly like one has to select that appropriate structure that can fulfill that concept. So, if you summarize uh, this particular lecture, so synergy between forms and structural element is essential to bring the concepts into real world architecture. So, as already I mentioned, if we dream of something to be very dynamic, uh, having large span, having very lightweight structure, so we have to select the suitable structure for it. If we go very traditionally conventional manner with a very limited structural form, very straightforward beam column, so maybe many of our concept uh, will be compromised. Then concept of architectural design to be supported with appropriate structural form that I already mentioned and in order to achieve that, one has to know the type of structure to be used and in order to make that structure, uh, we also should know the material to be selected for making this structure because each material will have different property in terms of resistance, strength. So, we should also have clear idea and that is why in the uh, whole course we will have uh, some lectures on materials. So, different kind of materials that will give a visual look is uh, one area, but also considering the structure and strength, so that has different property. So, when you see a building, okay, so we see the building material, we see different components of the building, door, windows, etcetera. So, like that uh, each components of a structure like though it is material or the form or different property, we will discuss in detail in uh, coming lectures. And these are the further reading already I have mentioned, these are few important books you can go through uh, and you get uh, more examples. To the next lecture we will discuss in lecture 3, the part 2 of this where we will discuss about uh, the different architectural qualities and the supporting structure relationship. Thank you for uh, taking part in this.